Hello students, uh, today let's do some problems on the, the concept of reduced mass. Before going to the problems, let me revise the concept once. So we all know that earth revolves around the sun. In our basic understanding, we often treat that sun is stationary and only the motion of the earth. So we say that earth is revolving around the sun. But technically, however, this is a two body system. This is a two body system. So, where both earth and the sun revolves around their common center of mass. Around their common center of mass. Okay. So, similarly, the situation arises in atoms where electrons are said to be re revolve around the nucleus. But in reality, both electrons in the nucleus move around a common center of mass system. Okay, center of mass system. So, to analyze such systems, where both bodies are in motion, physicists use a powerful and elegant concept called reduced mass. So, it allows us to reduce the complex two-body interaction into an equivalent one body. So, two body interaction converted into one body body problem so it makes the mathematics very simpler while retaining the, the total physics concept and changing so, it is denoted by, reduced mass is denoted by a symbol mu, so which is given by mathematically m1 into m2 by m1 plus m2, where m1 m2 are the masses of the two bodies. So, this type of uh, uh, situations arises in atomic physics, molecular vibrations, planetary and stationary motions and scattering problems, they play. Uh, this concept plays very well. Now let's see some problems. So here the problem statement is the two particles the two particles of masses m1 is equal to 4m and m2 is m are initially at rest and are separated by a distance or in free space. So they are uh, they attract each other with gravitationally. So what is the minimum speed that particle m1 must be given while m2 remains at rest so that both particles escaped, escape at infinity that is system becomes unbound. So here two masses are given so this is m1 this is m2 m1 is four times bigger than m2 so initially they are separated by stress r. Now we want to give a force, uh, a velocity to m1 such that it goes to infinity. So that's why they, they both are permanently separated. So that is our target. Okay. Now we will replace uh, the two body system into a reducer mass system. So we will find mu, so which can be given by m1, m2 by m1 plus m2. So if I substitute the values 4m into m by 4m plus m if I simplify finally I will get 4 by 5 m okay this is reduced mass and then what is the total energy of the uh, of the system so total energy total energy is kinetic energy plus potential energy right so which can be given as half into mu relative velocity square minus g into m1 m2 by capital R. Why I wrote v relative? Because one is uh, one particle uh, one mass is at rest and other is moving. So we will consider relative velocity and mu is reduced mass here. So here we should understand that the system must become unbound. So let us pause and understand what is meant by 
system becomes unbound. So imagine two objects like planets attracting each other with gravity. If they are close together and not moving fast, gravity pulls them back again. No matter how far they go, they are bound. But now imagine one object moves just fast enough to overcome the gravitational pull forever. That's the escape condition. So, so the system becomes unbound. So in physics this happens when total mechanical energy becomes zero or more. So that's when kinetic energy exactly cancels or equals to gravitational potential energy. So in our problem, we want to take, we want to give particle M1 just enough speed so that it escapes gravitationally, uh, gravitational grip of M2. And both, uh, both of these particle uh, bodies will go unbound. So never to return. So that means here kinetic energy is equal to potential energy. So first of all, let's see the conditions. Okay. So in two body system, if E less than zero, that is bound system. E is equal to zero, just unbound. E greater than zero, permanently unbound. Okay, never returns to each other. So in our problem, we will equate kinetic energy is equal to potential energy. So this will yield half into mu relative velocity square is equal to g into m1 m2 by r. So if I simplify it, I will get v relative velocity is equal to With just a simplification 2 into capital G M1 M2 by mu capital R. What is G here is universal gravitational constant. So now I substitute M1 is equal to 4M and M2 is equal to M. Okay, so then V relative velocity will become. 2 capital G 4M into M by we already found reduced mass. So what is that? 4 by 5 into M into R under root. So finally, if I simplify, so I will get 10 capital G small m by R. So this is the relative velocity. But what is our aim? So we want to find what is the velocity of M. Uh, m1 alone okay so we need to find velocity of m1 alone so far we find relative velocity only so what is relative velocity uh, uh, formula v1 is equal to modulus of v1 minus v2 v1 is velocity of first particle v2 is velocity of second particle but in our situation second particle is at rest so that means v is equal to 0 so that means v relative velocity is equal to v1 therefore v1 is nothing but 10 capital g m by r so which is i think option b okay now we will see next problem now second problem Two point masses M1, M2 are connected by a rigid massless rod of length L. The two systems rotate freely in vacuum about a perpendicular axis passing through the center of mass of the dumbbell. So what is the moment of inertia of the system about center of mass? So here two masses both are connected by a rod. So it looks like say, in a dumbbell. So for example say this is M1. This is M2. So now both of them are passing through uh, are revolving around a common axis passing through center of mass. Actually, this is a well known example. Uh, we do we solve this we solve this derivation in rotational mechanics. 
so it's very very important it's not a problem it's the uh, direct result so now in such in, in such situations so what is the total movement of inertia of the body so i can be given as m1 r1 square plus m2 r2 square so what is m1 m2 actually here let me explain clearly so here they initially they both are separated by length l so this is the center of mass so now i am taking this distance as r1 and this distance as r2 okay so let's this is as equation 1 okay now from the center of mass condition the from the condition of center of mass so we can write m1 r1 is equal to m2 r2 okay and also we know that r1 plus r2 is equal to l now let us solve these two equations if you solve them so we can directly get r1 value as r1 is equal to m2 capital l by m1 plus m2 here l is capital l is length don't confuse that l is angular momentum it's not angular momentum it is length only and here this is a simple uh, solvation and from you will get m1 capital l by m1 plus m2 so now i substitute r1 value and r2 value in equation 1 okay so then so then i become m1 into m1 capital m l plus m plus m2 whole square plus m2 into whole square so finally if we simplify it simplification only so finally you will get m1 plus sorry m1 m1 m2 m2 by m1 plus m2 l square so therefore movement of inertia is called this is nothing but reduced mass m l square so that's it so now the next question an atom of singly uh, singly ionized helium uh, has a nucleus four times as massive as a proton if the reduced mass uh, reduced mass corrections are considered what is the ratio of the ground state energies of the helium and the hydrogen actually this problem is number of times given in many set exams uh, west bengal set karnataka set and also i think many M msc entrance exams also repeatedly this type of questions comes so now let us, now let us see so what we should uh, to find we have to find the ratio ratio of the ground state energies of the helium plus and hydrogen and the data is given that helium has a nucleus which is four times massive as proton okay so now what is the ground state energy of hydrogen atom or hydrogen like atom so if you remember it can be given as energy is minus mu z square e power 4 by 2 h square square 4 pi epsilon naught whole square m square so this is the general expression for energy in ground state that means you will put e1 is equal to 1 so then it will become so e z square e power 4 2 h square square 4 pi epsilon naught whole square n becomes 1 okay so in this uh, in this particular problem we are mainly interested in here e is constant so what is e what is small e is charge of electron h square square planck's constant 
epsilon 4 epsilon so everything is a constant so what are the variables here so e1 proportional to mu z square so what is mu reduced mass and what is z atomic mass atomic number okay so now here these two are the important things so here we have two masses so here we have two masses one is helium so which is uh, whose atomic number is two and other one is hydrogen atomic number one okay so if you substitute these two values in here so you will get e1 he plus for helium and e1 h for hydrogen so you will get mu he by mu h into 2 by 1 whole square so you will get 4 into mu he by mu h so that's it actually it resembles option c so option c so that's it so the ratio is 4 times 4 he by mu h actually in the problem it is given that it, uh, the nucleus of helium is four times massive as as proton but here it is not at all useful so we just use atomic number only and some people if you observe some people say that option b is also correct why it is correct why they say so let us see so now we got four times mu he by mu h so what is mu h reduced mass of hydrogen so which is given by me mp by me plus mp right so why in hydrogen atom one proton one new, uh, one electron so this is proton this is electron traverse around the proton okay so this is reduced mass of hydrogen so similarly reduced mass of helium so you will get me 4 mp here it is useful 4 mp so 4 mp plus 4 mp okay so now if you substitute uh, we find the ratio mu he by mu capital h so we just divide this two so finally and simplifying i will get 4 me plus mp by me plus 4 mp so most people think that this value this value uh, more le less than slightly more than four times so that's why they think that maybe it is 0 0.002 actually uh, somehow the the assumption is correct but we can't say correctly why because we need exact value of me and mp then we only we substitute here then solving it only we can understand it so that's why for in the present situation we can finalize that this option is only correct that's it thank you